Hello everyone. Several hours ago an 8.9 scale earthquake hit Japan. Unfortunately fatalities already have been reported. This is the biggest earthquake in recorded Japanese history and it's also an offshore earthquake meaning that it's already causing tsunamis and locations around the very large Pacific region are already bracing themselves for tsunamis to come. Now, you know, this is a disaster and what's particularly frightening and coincidental is that it's coinciding with an event which is going to be taking place about eight days from now, March 19th, something called a super moon event. Now what's going to be happening is the moon is going to be the closest it's been in the past 18 years. Now if you don't know this, the moon is one of the celestial objects which is central to our existence. Without the moon, the earth would spin violently much faster. The moon also creates the tides that we have in the oceans and things will be much more volatile, temperatures will be much more volatile. We basically won't have seasons. Now when you have a moon that's going to be closer, it makes scientific sense that the gravitational pull should be stronger, should have a different effect as if it's further away. Now, it's really interesting because this massive, massive earthquake, this wasn't a small earthquake, this is a massive earthquake. 8.9 is a monster. I mean, news is still coming in about the after effects, there's aftershocks happening. It's eight days before this event takes place where the moon is going to be the closest it's been in 18 years. Now, why is it happening now? Why didn't it happen? on the 19th, right? Why is it happening early? So, I mean, I was just thinking, the moon takes time to get there. If it's coming closer, it's not going to go from one place to another. It has to move to get here, to get closer. So on its way, maybe the force was enough to add to the already pent up energy of this earthquake, because earthquakes happen all the time. They happen without the moon coming too close or too far away or wherever. It's not dependent on the moon. The thing to think about is, is that did the moon push it over the edge? Did it give it that extra kick that it needed to trigger this earthquake, the extra seismic activity to push the tectonic plates in a way where the earthquake was started? Now, you know, there's a lot of astrologers talking about what the 19th is going to do and, you know, I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in the science. And seismologists agree and they admit that the moon and the sun do have a seismic effect on the earth. They increase seismic activity. So this is something to think about. Now what's really worrisome is that, you know, what the moon does, what it decides to do is totally out of our control. But if we have any increase in seismic activity on anything that's already seismically active, such as a supervolcano, such as Yellowstone, Yellowstone is a sleeping monster. All right? It's being discovered more now that the caldera is just the beginning. Below that, there's something even more grand, more dangerous, more incredible about how deep and how dangerous this is. And what makes Yellowstone so dangerous, of course, is that you have the gas in the lava. And that's what gives it all this pent-up energy, which can create the eruption. And we're talking about all volcanoes. There's a lot of volcanoes. There's other supervolcanoes, especially in Indonesia, which is a violent place. Violently active with volcanoes. Such as the last one, which was a very long time ago, with Toba. So, the, the point is, is that the moon does cause seismic activity. And like I said, you know, maybe this earthquake wouldn't have happened if not for the increased presence of the moon coming in. That's just something to think about because the March 19th event is in the air, right? Happened eight days before. But, you know, an extra increase, such as an extra increase, such as even to think about, which is catastrophic to think about. You know, we don't even want to think about Yellowstone. We don't want to think about that, but you have to because it's a reality that it's a super volcano. We don't know when it's going to happen, right? It will happen. 
It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. It can happen soon, it can happen thousands of years from now. But if you have gas within that lava, and you have a place where thousands of earthquakes happen all the time, small ones, you know, but if you have something extra to trigger something, to release more gas together with that lava, that extra kick to push something over the edge, such as the moon, right, or the sun, then, you know, it's possible something can happen. What will happen, we don't know. The magnitude, that's something that we just don't know when it's going to happen, right? But it's something to think about and, you know, it's just, it's kind of worrisome. It's kind of worrisome as opposed to, you know, the seismic activity that not just happens on the Earth, but there's things outside this planet which can add to the seismic activity, which can cause disasters like this, such as what happened with, in Japan, whether the Japanese earthquake was going to happen without it, did the moon trigger it, the increased presence, with the moon getting closer, that's something, as far as I know, is unknown. So it's something very interesting to think about. I'd like to know your thoughts. Please leave your comments, and thank you for tuning in.